ha having a single system that does everything creates tremendous visibility. So mm -hmm. everybody at Lemonade who needs to see and should see data across the entire business can see it in one, one system in real time. And so there's a real, we think of the data platform as the core of the business, not a thing that's outside or sort of bolted on onto the business. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's really the core of the business. So we've got a couple of tools, just a, maybe a couple of specific examples that that I think kind of help might help to explain it. So one of our one of our tools that's built into that system is called Cooper. It's our own internal bot that helps us automate processes. So Cooper is this little, you know, it's a little avatar with a cute little face, but <laughs> Cooper will show up in the morning and remind me to do something, remind mm -hmm. me to send out a notice, remind me to do a performance review, remind me uh, something something task oriented within the company. Cooper will show up in our tech team and help them push uh, new code out into the server structure to do a test. So things that are just basic things that we do every day that that historically would just be um, something that a human wakes up and does, we can automate and and push through our own internal bot called called Cooper. We have a similar thing externally. We've got AI Maya who helps us sell policies. So policies are sold in two or three minutes. And what's interesting is. It's not a single approach to every customer. In many ways, it's a it's a uniquely customized approach to every customer. Mm. There are there are, are tens of thousands of different pathways that each customer can take that adjust in real time based on their responses. So every customer is going to have a different set of responses. It can take them down a different path. The ultimate goal is the same: mm. understand their risk, price them appropriately, and and ideally sell them a, a policy. But all of those multiple pathways are are a thing that we just take for granted that an incumbent might struggle to do in an agent based approach or a or a less data driven or, or platform driven approach. So these are the kinds of things you can do again when you have a single platform built just in the last few years that's designed to do exactly what we need to do. Yeah, got it. And you've touched on the benefit to the end consumer there. Uh, I kind of wanted to to dig into that a little bit. Something that we haven't discussed as much is kind of why an end consumer would go with Lemonade over one of these more traditional established insurance firms. Uh, we've talked about kind of efficiency, a more bespoke approach and policy as a result. I imagine there are cost savings there, but you can tell me whether that's the case. Um, but also the the feeling that they're doing some good. I mean, I, I read about the social impact some of the revenue that they're contributing can have via Lemonade. So perhaps you can dig into that that latter point as well, because it's not one that we've covered so far. Sure, sure. I I would think of it as a one of the ways we've described it over time is is sort of a combination of of value and values. Mm -hmm. uh, and and many of our customers um, can can skew a little younger, a little urban, a little more digital sa digitally savvy. Mm. You know, I, I used to say that five or six years ago, I think that's kind of all customers now, whether they're yeah. 20 or 40 or 60 or 80, I think, I think the world is just shifting in that direction. And so if you think of, of value, uh, we're attractively priced. We don't lead with price anymore, but we're very attractively priced, mm -hmm. particularly in uh, renter's insurance, which is our, our largest by number, by quantity uh, product uh, and by number of customers. But generally, we'll be very price competitive, but we're we're not a um, we're not a discount provider. Yeah. So there's value in um, uh, effective pricing. The value side of the equation is interesting. We actually have what, what uh, and have had since day one what we call our charitable give back, mm -hmm. which is not a way to donate to charity, though it, it is actually that. It's actually something that we built into the business model that we think can. Um, leverage behavioral economics, leverage how people think about the world and their product and their vendors and their their needs uh, in a way that is beneficial to us and to them. And the way it works is um, each customer that comes to Lemonade, uh, we let them know, we have a charitable give back. Please, please choose a charitable organization from our you know list of kind of pre-vetted folks. Mm -hmm. And if your loss experience over the course of the year is positive, is good, some of that leftover money will go to that charity on your behalf. If your loss experience of your group uh, is not so good, they may not get anything. So there's sort of this variable aspect to it. And what we find is, is our customers tend to be thinking not so much about Lemonade and the and the, the big insurance company that they may not know so well, but they're thinking, oh, about the Red Cross or the animal shelter or their kid's school that is the charity that they've chosen. 
and it's it's good from a, an emotional standpoint, but it's also good from a financial standpoint. If a customer, when they're filing a claim, is thinking, not how do I get more money from this insurance company, but I don't really want to take money away from this charity. I'm I'm gonna hopefully claim what's appropriate. And and it it changes the game to some extent of how people think about insurance and filing a claim and getting money back. And it's it's really at the core of the 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 financial strategy of the business, but also the customer promise strategy of the business.